So it has been a couple of months since the last update on the Peugeot 205 and that is for good reason. I was of course waiting for some more packages to arrive and actually show you the finished result. So in the meantime, four of the final boxes arrived and I could finish this build. So let's just start off with the first of those boxes and start the assembly process. First of all, I'm just going to assemble the rear trunk. Some trim pieces, some glass and also a small spoiler need to be put in place. With the rear trunk or hatch now fully assembled, I could put it in place on the body itself. It did require a bit of fiddling around and also a good push to snap in the permanent position. But once that was completed, I could move on to the inside of the body to finish some of the interior trim work. First of all, I'm just going to start on the headliner, putting on some of the handles and also a light dome light uh, that will actually be functioning and I will show you later in the video and then also start on some of the uh, rear panels in the rear seat section. The first seat belt has been put on, then I needed to put on a couple of the trim pieces for some of the speakers, also the armrests and some other parts, and then could install the second seat belt for the rear seat. Once finalized, I could put it inside the body itself for its final resting place. I then needed to do a small modification to the rear parcel shelf. I coated it in a matte clear coat and then while it was still wet, I applied the flocking on top of it to give it that carpeted look that the actual ones in the real cars have as well. I just used a light gray flocking. I let that sit and cure overnight and could then install it in the first half of that door panel or that rear panel that I just finished off and then could put that second panel on as well to uh, sort of squish it in place and hold it there. For the hatch itself, I also needed to install some struts so that second half could now be installed as well and then screwed to the body itself. For the actual parcel shelf to go up and down along with the trunk or the hatch, there was a small piece of rope that was installed at the beginning of the video that now needed to be threaded through the actual parcel shelf itself, then made it to the correct length and I needed to tie a knot in it 
and could then actually function, go up and down with the hatch too. And then I could move on to the doors. A couple of trim pieces on the exterior and also the lock needs to be put in. Some pieces for the uh, shuts and returns needs to be done as well. A small piece of sticky back felt was also installed on both the door itself and the door panel, which will be put on later as a sort of uh, scratch resistant lining for the glass piece to slide along and not actually scratch it. So the cool thing about these bigger kits is that they have a lot of functioning parts. Now, not only do the doors and trunk and hood and stuff like that open, but in this case, it also has a window in the door which can go up and down. So a small bit of mechanism was installed inside of the door panel. Then the window was put in place and the final piece of the mechanism was installed as well. Give it a couple of test runs and then install the entire assembly onto the door. With the final piece of trim now also installed, I could put the door onto the actual body. So just like the headlights and also the dome light on the headliner, the tail lights have an actual LED in there too. So that needs to be threaded through the body, then put into the actual tail light, and then that assembly could be put in place and screwed tightly. During the initial build of the interior, there were a lot of pieces of sticky back carpet that needs to be installed. Now the cool thing about these parts builds is that they have uh, the opportunity to fix some things and also add additional parts that they might have forgotten or overlooked at the beginning of the build itself. And so to see uh, or speak improve upon their own build and fix some of their mistakes in a later package. And that is also the case for the carpet, a couple of screws and pieces all around. Uh, that they just added in later packages and you simply just need to install before finalizing the build to complete it even more. So with that final piece of carpet now installed, I could finally move on to adding the chassis and body together for the final time. A couple of the wires needed to be connected to each other. Some of course are inside of the body and the rest of the main circuit board was installed into the chassis. So hooking those up will make them function in the end. They did need to be tucked away a little bit underneath the carpet or main interior tub and then the body could be put into its final place. A couple of screws need to be installed from the underside and then of course some batteries as well to test it out and see it actually functioning. So the dome light itself is working when the doors are opened and then you also have the brake pedal that can be pressed in and that actually functions to the brake lights as well. There is some interior lighting as well connected behind the actual gauge cluster and that is turned on when you turn all the lights on for both the front and rear.
So with all of the lights working, I could fit up the final pieces of the interior to the chassis pieces and also finalize the rear bumper and some of the exterior pieces like the side skirts before moving on to a couple small more custom touches. In one of the first episodes on this build, I asked you guys if you wanted to see me customize this build a little bit. I wasn't going to deviate from the color that it is already painted in as it looks really good in red and a lot of the details are already there. So what I did was add some flocking for some carpet here and there, but not overdid it. And I also asked you guys for some help on some of the custom options for the wheels. So I reached out to the community and got a couple of responses from guys to help out with customizing the wheels. So the first one to reach out and make the wheels was Pedro, and of course my friend Mads for making a custom set of brakes. So for the brakes themselves, we basically took the standard design but added some drilled holes in there as well, just to make them a bit cooler and upgraded from the standard ones. And for the wheels, we went with a couple of Speedline wheels that were actually used on a lot of these rally cars and were commonly seen on these cars back in the day. Now these were 3D printed about a year ago at a 0.01 layer height, basically the finest setting. I then left them in the box for about a year until I needed them and basically gave it a quick sand with some 600 grit sandpaper, primed it with Tamiya primer. This is good for resin and metal, so that works really well on these uh, 3D printed resin wheels and then coated them with a couple shades of silver, letting them cure overnight and could then install them in the tires and actually put them on the car. I'm really happy with the way that the wheels and the brakes look. It is a small custom touch, but does upgrade the exterior a lot and makes it a lot more personal. So I'm really happy that you guys helped me out in creating the designs and actually having me 3D print these and put them on my model. And then finally to finish it all off and add a little bit more detail and refinement to a couple of areas, I took out some flat back paint and a brush to hide a couple of the red spots, which I personally didn't think were supposed to be there. So on the doors themselves, a small red edge was of course hidden with the black paint just to uh, make it blend in with the actual door rubber itself, as I'm pretty sure that red wasn't supposed to show through. And then finally, I also decided to paint that black edge around that rear quarter. Uh, I'm not really sure if it is supposed to be black or red. There is a piece of red trim in here. I have seen a couple of photos online and, uh, and actually came across some of these cars in real life and didn't see any of the bodywork showing through that clearly in that red color. So I decided just to hide it with a bit of black paint and in my personal opinion, it looks a lot better and a lot more finished. So I'm really happy that I did. Overall, I really enjoyed this build. From start to finish, it is a super complicated and nice looking detailed kit. If you're interested in one of these for yourself, there will of course be links in the description.